So last year we snapped a 13-game losing streak to Vanderbilt, and uh, we're two and 15 at Vandy in the last, you know, since 1990. So again, a really good opportunity for us um, to continue to make history with our program. Um, I think Vanderbilt's record is is clearly a function of the competitiveness of our league, um, and 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 a little bit of the youth of their basketball team. They got a couple of young guys. Um, but they would have had a, a freshman point guard who got hurt early in the year, was McDonald's All-American, who's probably going to be in the draft next year, Garland. Um, but looking at the roster, all these kids were highly recruited kids. These were all fours and five-star players. They were, they were all really highly ranked, you know, transfers from um, Notre Dame and and uh, uh, good, pro, you know, really good program, Syracuse. I mean, these are, these are highly rated kids. I'm going to make sure my guys understand that going in. Um, so there's a lot of talent there, and they're very well coached. They just, you know, they've lost some close games that they probably could have, should have won. And, um, you know, so for us, we've got to be able to, uh, we've got to be able to value possessions more. And you may hear me say that from time to time. And um, uh, it becomes even more challenging up there because I don't have as much uh, kind of control of my offense. Um, um, we played very, very hard against Ole Miss defensively. We guarded them throughout the clock. They made five or six shots at the end of the clock, uh, and that's why they were able to come in here and win. Um, but we wore ourselves out guarding them, and then down at the offensive end, we were very, very sloppy. And we didn't put forth the effort, the energy required to be able to get better looks and shoot a better percentage. That is how you have to win on the road. You have to be able to go on the road, not turn the ball over, get the looks you want to get. Um, and we haven't done a great job, uh, you know, with that. Um, you know, that said, um, I think if you want to evaluate our team's strength right now, um, since we won the three games at home, went to LSU, and then lost to Ole Miss, the last five games, We've defended really well, particularly in our first shot defense. If you take our first shot defense against LSU, we win the game. We gave up 29 second chance points. So for the last five games, we've guarded well. You guys have heard me talk about defense a lot. We've got to continue to guard like we're guarding, do a better job of executing, valuing possessions on the offensive end. I think then the last thing would be simply the bench, um, whether it be the coach or the guys coming off the bench. We've got to do a better job. Um, it's not fair to Bryce Brown or Jared Harper that if they don't play well, we don't win. Your best players sometimes are going to have a night off and they do they not, not making shots or not engaged defensively or just it's not there. They don't have that same energy or they're dealing with an injury. or they're dealing, We still have to be able to win those games. And to do that, we've got to have more contribution, you know, from our bench. And it's been limited the productivity we've gotten off the bench, particularly in the backcourt. Puts a lot of pressure on Jared and Bryce. So those are some things that we can improve on as we go to play uh, you know, Vanderbilt. Um, Vanderbilt's one of the bigger teams in the league. They're, they're big. Um, they will play, uh, you know, their guards are 6'7", six, 6'7", seven, six, seven, uh, as well as uh, um, uh, their point guard being a good, you know, a good sized point guard as well. Saban Lee, um, and they're they're big on the front they're big on the front line, so we'll have to deal with their length uh, as well. As a whole, this season you guys were very good at like efficiency. A lot of those advanced metric sites rate you guys very highly. Is that something that you could kind of, as a coach, whether it's communicating that to your team or looking at it and saying you've lost a lot of close games? Is that something you look at? At all? Well, you know, for me, the the efficiencies are where we try and. Where we as coaches can can have impact, you know, if if we are efficient offensively, um, if we are, you know, those metrics are things the things that coaches can definitely watch. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, right now, and then as far as you know, kind of where we are, big picture, you know, our, our net is 24. So, if you take the top 24 teams in the country and 
you know, there are certainly, obviously we're looking at an art large NCAA bid. Now we're going to be playing our way in or out of the NCAA tournament over the next however many games we got left during the regular season. And so the closer you get to being in the 40s and the 50s, the closer you get to the bubble. And you can get there uh, in, in a hurry. So we, the good thing is I've been on teams and I've been in leagues where you don't have an opportunity to move. It, you ju there's nothing on your schedule that gives you an opportunity to move one way or the other. Fortunately, we have an opportunity every night to move. And, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's what you want. Is there any way you can get Jared's minutes down? Because it seems like he's if, if, playing a lot of if Jared's playing a lot of minutes, and, and, and Javon needs to play better when he's out there. He struggled against LSU. He struggled in practice this week in preparation for Ole Miss. And, um, and I have more confidence that Javon can, can do certain things. He's, he's a great kid. He's a hard worker. And he, and he really wants to be able to – he loves his teammates, and his teammates love him. Um, and um, I'm not sure his confidence level is where it, ne where it needs to be. Can Samir play any point? Um, Samir could play point, and uh, Bryce could play point. Um, but we're not – you know, right now we're rotating the five guards with, with Samir and Malik, um, Jared and Bryce, and Javon. So we only have five. So if you shorten the rotation, then you go four guards in three in three positions. It's not enough. We need we need all five of our guards. Is Austin Wilder playing with some pain right now? Is that affecting the quality of his? Performance? Yeah, Austin still absolutely is feeling um, his lower leg injury. Uh, he is at no risk to injure it further because he can because he can still feel it. But I still think in feeling that and having some pain. Uh, it limits what he's willing to do and how hard he's willing to push. And uh, so as a result, he's just not as effective. I think it's a, it's a statement about his toughness. I think it's a statement about his character um, that even though he is not able to perform and produce like we know he's capable, he's still out there trying to work his way through and, and, and hoping that it's been four weeks now today. And so we said two to three weeks was what, what the injury looked like. Um, we're, we're past that now. And we're hoping that any time the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the pain he's experiencing goes away. And then he'll then have the confidence to go ahead and, and uh, do the things that he's capable of doing, running with speed, moving laterally, jumping. Um, you know, there are rebounds and there are plays that he could make but I just don't know that right now his body is feeling like he can explode. A lot of guys on this year's team playing last year. Do you think there's any of that pressure that last year we were playing for the best seed, and now this year we're playing to get a seed in the tournament? Do you think the mindset changes with the guys? I think having high expectations are a great thing. I think fans being disappointed that we're not winning is a great thing. That's what, we, that's what you work to try to create, even amongst the media. I think that's a, it's a good thing. Um, if we were 10th at one time, we worked our butts off to be 10th. If we're 24th now, that's where we are right now. Um, your, your expectation, one way or the other, you know, you've got to deal with that as a fan or media or, or coach. So if you're disappointed with being 24th, that's okay. You have a right to be disappointed with being there. Um, the reality is we still have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. The, the reality is we still have a chance to continue to be a really good competitive team. We've not played our best basketball yet. Are we going to? Um, you know, the league is obviously, it's, it's an unforgiving uh, 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 conference every single night. Um, but, I, you know, I, I don't know that our, our goals have changed. Um, you know, we're still in a position because of, how well we've played in the in the games that we've won, to still do everything that you know, pretty much everything we want to do. It's going to be pretty difficult to win the league in the regular season. But two or three weeks ago, I talked about LSU, Kentucky, Tennessee separating themselves. I talked about that. So, I guess in saying that, I was sort of sending you all a message that that's sort of there, and and now we're you know, we're trying to make a run to get in the tournament, and play for a national championship in the NCAA tournament. That's our focus. What is the team's overall psyche and how would you assess their confidence level? 
I mean, I think it's I think it's pretty good. I mean, obviously, as I mentioned right after the game, the the one loss that I would point to that was a, you know, um, a loss that we should have gotten was the Ole Miss game on Saturday. Um, I was disappointed after LSU, but but at the same time, I was pretty proud of how we went up there and played a team that had beaten Mississippi State at Mississippi State just before, gone to Kentucky, then after they beat us and beat Kentucky. I knew they were good. And so I knew we played. We really did a lot of really good things to be in a position to beat those guys. So while I was disappointed with the loss and the way the game ended, um, I was still pretty felt feel good about our team, you know. And um, um, against Ole Miss, we obviously lacked just a little bit of that effort and energy. And when we shoot five for twenty and our two best players have an off night. We, you know, we're not able to win. I would still like to be able to win if we could get more contributions from me and the bench and others. We could still pull out, you know, pull off a win. What's your takeaway from Juma's game a couple days later? I mean, do you need him to do that the rest of the way? No, I mean, it shows you what he's capable of doing. Um, and, um, but again, you know, Chuma wants to win. Uh, he doesn't care if he scores two or 22. He truly doesn't. Um, you know, he lets the game come to him. Um, and it's just amazing, like, if if some players aren't getting their shots or their looks and they don't feel like they're scoring, then all of a sudden it affects the rest of their game, even on our team. It happens all the time in basketball. It happens all the time. Chuma plays great defense and he rebounds whether he scores or not. I mean, it's just he is the same. That's why he's one of our most outstanding players. That's why, that's why we talk about Chuma, about being a pro as much or more than anybody else on our team because he does those things. He guards his matchup. He rebounds the ball. He scores inside and out. And so while everybody wants him to be more aggressive and do more and do that every night, you know, there are some nights um, that he may have a matchup or he may have a situation where he's going to be able to, but he still affects winning in all the other ways every night, defense, rebounding, being in the right spots, and some nights he scores more than others. It's a really, really healthy thing, you know. Um, and, yes, at some point there's going to be a time, and there have probably been moments in some late-game situations where another big shot or another big play or another big free throw or another big spot stop is required from him for us to win. But it's certainly uh, – He's certainly, winning, he's certainly winning his position almost every night. Do you feel like the way that Ole Miss played is somewhat like, are you worried that teams can kind of replicate that to some extent? Say that again, I'm sorry. The way Ole Miss played, slowing down the game a lot, is that something that you think other teams might try to replicate? Well, Florida tried. Yeah. You know, they tried. and But Florida wasn't able to make that shot at the end of the clock like Ole Miss does. So if Ole Miss doesn't make that shot at the end of the clock five or six times, they don't win. And they did, but they made they lined us up and they made those shots and made those plays. Um, yeah, being a patient against a team that likes to play fast and likes to run, that's a good strategy, certainly.